One of my favorite movies ever, it's Woody Allen's The Purple Rose of Cairo. Let me tell you why I've watched this 15 to 20 times. Every time I watch it, it's as good as before. Love all the lines in this and think this is a very profound, interesting philosophical movie about movie watching coming up next. <laughs> I really love The Purple Rose of Cairo. I like to use it in my classes as a movie about movie watching, why people watch movies, because the movie is clearly in, in one sense about that. There will be some spoilers here, and I love to show this movie without people seeing or knowing anything about it. So you should go watch the movie before you watch this video, because there's something very surprising that happens in the movie about 20 minutes in that I find absolutely delightful. The movie stars Mia Farrow as Cecilia, a woman in New Jersey during the Great Depression in the 1930s. She's poor, she's married to a jerk of a man played by Danny Aiello, and she's a dreamy, wistful sort of person who loves going to the movies. Her husband treats her poorly and she gets fired from her job. One day she goes to the movie theater. She watches this movie called The Purple Rose of Cairo five straight times and she's just in love with the movie, the movie's atmosphere, and it's a movie about rich people doing almost whatever they want and having fun, having a good time. Well, at one point in the movie, a character played by Jeff Daniels stares at her and then comes out of the movie theater into her world and says, I love you, let's run away. I gotta speak to you. Oh my God. The character's name is Tom Baxter, and here you have the idea of the movie world coming into reality, influencing reality, and The Purple Rose of Cairo, this Woody Allen movie, has a ton of fun making jokes about movies, how they influence the real world. As the plot goes along, the movie studio executives and Gil Shepard, the actor who plays Tom Baxter in the movie within a movie, they get upset, they go to New Jersey, they try to get Tom Baxter back into the movie. And so Cecilia, interestingly enough, has three men in her life, competing for her love and affection. One is her husband named Monk. The other is Tom Baxter, who is a fake or fictional character. And then Gil Shepard, the actor, he gets involved with Cecilia for various reasons. Two things right off the bat make this movie absolutely great. One is the cinematography by the great Gordon Willis. It's just absolutely lovely. This movie has one of my favorite shots ever in movies. It's when Cecilia and Tom Baxter are in the abandoned or empty amusement park. And this shot is so profound, I can't believe it. Both of these characters looking in each other's eyes. In between them is a worn out or sort of half beaten up poster of a magician or some kind of magic show person. This shot really describes the movie very well. It's the question of how much do the ideals, the magic of entertainment of movies, which are obviously fake and fictional and ridiculous, as in the movie here, you have Tom Baxter with fake movie money thinking it could be effective in the real world, or hopping into a car, hoping it will start without him needing a key and turning the key in the ignition. Movies have a lot of ridiculous things that they claim are real when clearly they're not realistic at all. But viewers like Cecilia are enchanted by the ideals or the fictionality of movies, and that's what this shot really embodies, that her enchantment of movies and movie characters is really interesting. This movie dwells on that to a great length. What Cecilia ends up having to choose between is the ideal Tom Baxter, the beau in her life who will love her and love her alone, He's consistent, he's reliable, he's stable. Probably the reason why Cecilia goes back to the movie theater over and over again, seeing the same movies over and over, is it gives her stability in her life. The movies are always predictable, as this script says, and she can rely on them to give her the ending or the other kinds of things that movies give every single time. That contrasts with the so-called real world, which is harsh, cruel and brutal, as exemplified by her husband Monk, who beats up on her, who is a total manipulator, a complete jackass of a man, and he is completely unstable. One of the ways this movie does this is in shots of Monk, the camera will move very quickly, just as Monk moves very quickly, darting back and forth, whereas in shots of Tom Baxter, particularly with Cecilia, there will be a stable camera. That hints at Tom Baxter's consistency and stability, versus the instability of Monk. Thus the movie contrasts the ideal world of movies, obviously, with the so-called real world of both Monk 
and Gil Shepard in Cecilia's harsh life in the Great Depression. Now, a bunch of paradoxes and ironies ensue here. The fake is really the real, where the real is fake. The ideal is this thing we want. And this movie brings in the allegory of Plato's cave just absolutely wonderfully, making the movie theater the cave itself with the flickering shadows on screen being the puppets in the cave in Plato's allegory. Well, wait a minute. Let's, let's just readjust our definitions. Let's redefine ourselves as the real world and them as the world of illusion and shadow. You see, we're reality, they're a dream. You better calm down. You've been up on the screen flickering too long. If you remember the allegory, of course, the observer of the puppets on the wall has to leave the cave and go up into the real light of the sun and thus get enlightened, illuminated, which is the journey of education or philosophy. However, this movie is actually saying that maybe the movies, the flickering shadows on the wall, maybe they're giving us false ideals as the puppets in, on the wall in Plato's allegory do, but also maybe they're giving us the ideals that would propel us towards a more well, philosophical, self-reflective existence. And thus Tom Baxter and everything else in the movie is an ideal world that Cecilia desires. And one reason she may watch movies beyond escaping from her harsh you know, po impoverished world of the Great Depression is to see and witness those ideals and to know that she wants them, hopefully then maybe enacting them in her life. There's a lot of ways you could read the movie within a movie here, The Purple Rose of Cairo. It could just be an escapist fantasy though of rich people where poor people in the depression watch rich people do whatever the heck they want with all the money they have. And thus it's kind of a pathetic fantasy that's going to end very quickly and it's ephemeral. On the other hand though, as I'm saying, the ideals presented by the Purple Rose of Cairo are very you know, alluring to Cecilia and worth thinking about. She should aspire to be, go beyond Monk, her husband, who beats her up. She should aspire to go beyond, hopefully, the real world which is harsh and cruel and can hurt you in a variety of ways. Now, talking about the cinematography launched me into the philosophy of the movie, there's another step here, which is that this movie is entirely postmodern. You have to notice that every time the movie is talking about the real world versus the fantasy world of movies, it itself is a movie that's depicting what reality so-called is. That is to say, it has the ideals of what the real is, the real world being brutal, harsh, cruel, painful, full of suffering, that itself is a fiction of the actual movie. So you always have to do this meta-analysis with this movie, saying that what it depicts, it itself is critiquing itself. Anyway, that's a beauty of the movie. It's part of the script written wonderfully here by Woody Allen. I won't comment on his character. I, it's There's problems in his life, no doubt about it, but he wrote, I think, a perfect movie here. Every line is absolutely wonderful about movie history, movie viewing, the philosophy of existence, and so on. So I found this movie to be provocative I've watched it 15 times and it's provoked me every time into wonder and thinking in, in a better imagination, I would say. And in the end, you know, the real people in Cecilia's life, Monk and Gil Shepard, end up being fake manipulators. They're the ones who are inconsistent. And Tom Baxter, the fictional construct, he is the real or the ideal man in her life. If you think of things in terms of platonic ideals, then Tom Baxter is the real, whereas the material is the illusion and shadow, which is Monk and Gil Shepard, and they do that to a T because they both manipulate Cecilia mercilessly. Thus you get to the final shot of the movie and when Cecilia goes back into the movie theater, she watches Swing Time with Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. Why does she watch the movie? The last shot is of us looking at a movie viewer's face, asking us a bunch of questions. Why does Cecilia watch movies? What is she getting out of them, especially in the end after all that's happened to her in this movie? But it also self-reflects of why do we watch movies? Why do we watch videos? What do we want from them? Do movies have more to offer than being just mere entertainment? And if so, what are those things? All of these questions are in this absolutely wonderful movie about observers and why they observe things. I have a lot more to say about the Purple Rose of Cairo, but let's leave it at that and let, let you comment. What do you have to say about this movie? What do you think about it? What are your questions? Let us know in the comments. Please subscribe to this channel for more great content. Thank you. Have a great day.